August is a big month for dogs. Is it? Yes, between Dogus, the universal birthday for shelter dogs, Assistant Dog Day, Spoil Your Dog Day, and Snoopy's birthday, there's a lot going on. Not to mention National Dog Day on August 26th. That's right. And you know, we here at Jack Russell Parents Podcast, a podcast for the most fanatic of dog lovers, had to go big for National Dog Day. Absolutely. We want to spoil your fur baby, so we're giving away a $50 PetSmart e-gift card to one lucky family. All you have to do is go to jackrusselparents.com slash giveaway. Listen to a super quick episode for the secret code word and enter to win. That's it? That's it. Can I enter? Uh, no. Oh. But everyone else can. So drop what you're doing and head on over to jackrusselparents.com slash giveaway. Entries close at midnight central time, August 31st, 2021. Good luck, puppy parents. Hi, I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier Dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each week, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Happy Monday, puppy parents. This is going to be a great week. Sure is, so long as we can get our finicky butt Carson to eat his dinner. Yeah, he's been a bit picky lately. A bit? A bit more than his usual level of very picky. (laughs) Right, so he went from about 9 out of 10 of pickiness (laughs) to 9.7 out of 10. How many brands of food do you think we've gone through? Um, If we had a dollar for every brand and type we've tried... We could buy another bag. (laughs) Yeah, we sure could. (laughs) You know, Carson has always been picky. But Gabe, you'll be uh, happy, I guess, to learn that we're not the only puppy parents to suffer the effects of canine (laughs) pickyitis. Yeah, I guess that's a relief. (laughs) So thankfully, we have lots of great puppy parent advice for the pickyitis today, starting with an insightful article from the American Kennel Club, then a great collection of get them to eat tricks from doglab.com. And somewhere in the mix, we'll announce our Insta Dog of the Week, and she's a cool one for sure. Oh, I can't wait to see her fuzzy little face. With that, <laughs> let's get this party started. Starting with the article from akc.org, why is my dog a picky eater? See, we're not the only ones to ask that question. Yes. Mary Curl begins, does it seem like your dog suddenly has lost interest in eating food? Did they knock over their food bowl out of boredom? While it could mean you have a picky eater on your hands, changes in appetite could also signal a greater health problem that should be addressed right away, particularly in young puppies, senior dogs, or pets with known underlying health conditions. The saying goes, some dogs eat to live, other dogs live to eat, (laughs) says Dr. Jerry Klein, chief veterinarian officer of the American Kennel Club. These behaviors are tied to both genetics and environment, you know, what they are born like and how you have trained them, even on accident to act. Pugs and Labradors are famous for having big appetites, generally speaking, while others like sighthounds are lean by nature, says Dr. Klein. Sighthounds eat, but due to their fast metabolisms, they gain little to no weight. But it really just comes down to a dog's personal preference. I had two Jack Russells growing up, Wiggles and Dottie, and one acted like a critic for Michelin, and the other sucked up their food like a vacuum cleaner. (laughs) Too true. So you never know what you're going to get. Generally, if a dog doesn't finish their bowl within 20 minutes, they are generally considered picky eaters. Also, if they ignore the bowl but beg at the table for scraps, it's a sure sign of pickyitis. And it's common knowledge that suddenly changing your dog's diet can cause upset stomach. Gastroenteritis is the schmancy word. Oh, thanks, Dr. Fancy Pants. (laughs) So the picky-itis can actually be caused by a different kind of itis, even gingivitis. Yes, even dental problems can be the reason your dog doesn't feel like eating. And I never thought of that before, but it's obvious and quite logical. 
So how do you know whether your pup is sick or just being a butt? <laughs> Dr. Klein says families with these types of dogs should take their fur baby to the vet immediately. Young puppies less than six months of age, pets experiencing a change of appetite with symptoms such as vomiting and diarrhea, dogs diagnosed with diabetes, or senior dogs that seem to want to eat but do not or will only eat soft foods. Ah, there's so much good info in this article. You can find a link to the rest of Mary's research at the show notes page for this episode at jackrussellparents.com slash blog. You know what that sound means. It's Insta Dog of the Week time. And this week we bestow our world famous honor on Mia Jack Russell. You can find her Insta at underscore Mia underscore Jack Russell, one word. Now, brace yourself, Becca, because she looks just like Wiggles. Oh, really? Okay, let me see. Oh, she does. How do they have such a similar <laughs> face? Oh, and she's an oldie, too, which is when I knew Wiggles when he was older. So it's so cute. She's starting to get the, yeah, the, the gray. It looks gray. The mask part starts to turn white. Uh-huh. Oh, she's so sweet. Mia's bio begins with a Union Jack flag, so we can assume she's a British lady. <laughs> <laughs> Born July 19th, 2014. It says, I love cuddles, playing with my toys, and going on adventures with mom and dad. I also get anxious sometimes. <laughs> Don't we all, Mia? <laughs> <laughs> there is a variety of photos on Mia's page complete with her tucked into bed, yawning. She gets to go out on walks, it looks like. Lots of adventure. She's got some fun toys, like a donut, a stuffed donut. <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute. She's very expressive, too. I feel like her eyes and her face are very, very expressive. There's so many cute pictures on here. One that I like a lot is it's actually a picture of her laying down and it's her bottom. <laughs> you can see her <laughs> bottom. But her tail is all brown. Wow. It just starts at the base and goes to the tip. And then the rest of her backside is white. But she's got this brown tail. It's so cute. Never seen that before. Mm -mm. Very interesting. I think my favorite, she's laying down and using a minion as a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, I love the one where it looks like she's getting ready for movie night. Oh, <laughs> popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> popcorn and crisps. She is ready for movie night. Is that a beer? That's a Jack Russell on that bottle. It says beef flavored dog beer, non-alcoholic. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> These are true puppy snacks. How cute. <laughs> Might be something to look into. So Carson doesn't keep eating all our popcorn when we yes. sit down for a movie. Turns into a maniac with popcorn. Be sure to add Mia's cuteness to your daily Insta scroll by following her at underscore Mia. That's M-I-A underscore Jack Russell. <laughs> I had an awesome puppy parent connection the other day. I was rocking my Jack Russell parents t-shirt in the grocery store and because of it, I struck up a great conversation with a lady. And not only did she think my shirt was super cute, she too had a JRT named Wags. And that's a great name. I love it when slogans like dog mom, dog dad, or Jack Russell parents bring people together. Me too. And one of my favorite prints is Jack Russell Terriers. Not a breed, a calling. Yeah, raising a JRT just might be the highest calling of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So are you a proud puppy parent that wants to connect with other puppy parents? Or do you simply like super cute doggy attire to go with your summer shorts? Either way, we have what you need at the Jack Russell Parent Store. All our awesome prints come in a variety of t-shirts, hoodies, baby onesies, laptop sleeves, even coffee mugs. Your choice. To join the doggy squad, check out all the rad merch options at jackrussellparents.com. Simply click on shop at the top and place your order. Go get them, puppy parents!
We're back to discuss the Battle of the Bowl, aka dealing with picky eaters. To help us and you win the war against pickyitis, let's take a look at a great blog post from doglab.com. 23 tricks to get a picky dog to eat its food. Every last bit. That's quite a gauntlet they've laid for themselves. Let's see if they're successful. Yes. For the sake of time, we're only going to share the top tricks, and you can find the rest on the show notes page at jackrussellparents.com slash blog. So Dog Lab's number one suggestion is see your vet. Some of the most common medical conditions that lead to picky eating include if they've swallowed something they shouldn't. We've been there many times. (laughs) Yes. If they have dental disease, like we mentioned earlier. Allergies, whether food allergies, I think, or like environmental allergies as well. Maybe they don't feel like eating. Infection, parasites, gastrointestinal issues, arthritis or spine issues, and then also vaccination side effects. So if your dog's picky eating has just started and you're not sure where it's coming from, definitely start with your vet to see if there's any underlying issue. Number two, remove your dog's meal until tomorrow. If they're being a butt, send them to bed with no dinner. Or perhaps they're just not hungry. Mm -hmm. One of the two. Yeah, give that a try. See if that helps. And then the next morning, they may gobble it up. Number three, swap over to a tastier food. So this one probably seems obvious, but I would try several different types of food, maybe even homemade food. Just keep in mind that lots of human foods are bad for dogs, like onions, garlic, too much salt, sugar, right? You want to keep all of that out. And I like to look at it this way, right? There might just be some things your dog doesn't like. And I get that. (laughs) There are foods that I don't like even as an adult. For example, I don't like crab. So if you put some crab cakes in front of me, I'm not going to eat it. (laughs) So take the time to see if you can narrow it down to even a specific ingredient that your dog doesn't like. Because chicken is a main ingredient in a lot of dog food, but maybe your pup is more of a salmon guy. Okay. Number four, (laughs) make the transition slowly. You don't want to find gastroenteritis all over your carpet. That's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) They recommend days one through three, you start with 75% of your current food and then 25% of the new food. Days four through six, it's 50-50. Days seven through nine, it's 25% of the current food, 75% of the new food. And then by day 10, all of the new food. Sounds like a good plan. Number five, mix in a food topper. This is a great idea. Sometimes they just need some motivation to get started. And so we often use coconut oil in a spray can that we just spray on. You could also use different types of broth, but of course, just make sure they're like low sodium, right? Maybe even a little peanut butter on top. Some of the probiotics that you can get for your dogs have a nice flavor that gets them eating. So those are all great ideas for food toppers. Now, it's time for Puppy Parent Replies. We ask puppy parents on social media for their best advice to cure the pickyitis. As always, their replies didn't disappoint. Douglas D says, we will spike her dinner with cheese, liver, chicken. Just mix it all in there. <laughs> I like how he says spike it. Yeah. <laughs> like they won't know. <laughs> Tom B. says, yes, my 55-pound collie doesn't like to eat at all, sometimes even refuses treats. However, she is active and healthy. I just leave her dry food out until she gets hungry. She eats once a day, usually late in the evening or middle of the night even. Wow. She will sometimes wait 30 to 36 hours, but eventually finishes it. And the vet and I have decided that that was just her way. And she's eight years old and doing fine. Wow. She just doesn't She don't need to eat as much as we think. Wow. Okay. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) Stephen O says, mine eats everything, all caps. We call him GG for garbage gut. Oh, my (laughs) gosh. (laughs) She's like a goat. (laughs) Well, I'm glad you don't have any problems. (laughs) And include this hilarious picture. (laughs) (laughs) That's tongue hanging out. Brenda L says, my dog will only eat out of my hand. If I put his dish on the floor, he hides under the table and won't come out. So she hand feeds him. That's some love, Brenda. That's so sweet. (laughs) Suji says, I use a trick someone posted on here where I eat first, then I put their food in my bowl or on my plate and feed them from there. It worked. Oh, that's clever. I like that. 
Amanda K says, the more stress you place on their eating, the more you will stress them out. Put their food down, tell them it's time to eat, and walk away. I think that's a good point. We don't want to stress them out over eating. It should be something that they enjoy and look forward to. Heidi H. says, I have a picky eater and a dog with allergies. I've been making their food for a couple years now. It helps with the allergies and they eat every drop, every meal. Mm, I like that. Jane M. says, I tell mine that the cats will eat her dinner. Gone before I turn my back. (laughs) (laughs) And a similar one where Rose H. says, I put the food in the cat bowl. So (laughs) They're such stinkers. They're like, I only want what the cat eats. (laughs) (laughs) As long as she thinks she's stealing from the cat, she's going to eat it. Uh, Amazing. Oh, that's great. Marcy P. says, we finally got a corgi, thinking, since corgis are notorious for eating anything and everything, it might help our Jack Russell not be as picky. Well, we ended up with the pickiest corgi alive. (laughs) She's pickier (laughs) than our JRT Marty. Leslie P. says, give him some of what we are eating, and then he goes and eats his own. Carson does the same thing, right? He does. Shirley O. says, mine loves a bit of grated cheese with his food. (laughs) Like an Italian restaurant, you're just sitting there grating the cheese, (laughs) saying, Say when. (laughs) Say when. (laughs) Then you have a big mound of cheese, not a sprinkle. (laughs) Claire V says, mine eats anything. Plastic, dirt, hair, poop, but won't eat what we put in her bowl. Oh, man. It happens. Brandy S says, on the other hand, hers is not picky at all. Even eats medicines like he's eating candy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And finally, we have Chris N who says, offer them food. If they don't eat it, pick it up and put it away. Repeat regularly until they realize it's the only option they get. If you continually offer them other options, they'll only become more picky and you'll go broke (laughs) trying different foods. I feel you. Well, Chris, we may have gotten ourselves into this situation. You are right. I think that's true. So we know you love your picky eater as much as we love ours. So be patient and be willing to try new foods or tactics. Your fur baby will appreciate all you do to make their little bellies and hearts happy. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn from the content? Or did you just have a good, relatable laugh? Well, now what? It's time to subscribe, follow, keep listening, and give a positive review on the Apple Podcast app. Then share the podcast with other puppy parents. This will allow us to connect you and your friends with fun, dog-loving content week after week. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell parents. Say bye, Carson. (coughs) We'd love to connect with you online at jackrusselparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier podcast. The Jack Russell Parents podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrusselparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm-hmm.